In this video, we're going to be graphing quadratic equations in vertex form. Now, quadratic equations, those are equations that have x squared in them. And vertex form, that's a specific way of writing an equation with x squared in it. We'll take a sneak peek ahead here. These equations here are all written in vertex form. So we'll look at those closer in just a moment. But first, let's study some parent graphs, because that's going to help us. The most basic parent graph is for y equals x squared. Before we sketch that, let's just make a little table of values here. And let's start with 0. Now when we square 0, that'll just be 0. Choose 1 for x. 1 squared is 1. And we'll choose 2 for x. And 2 squared equals 4. Another point zero zero. We'll just get approximate locations on these and one one and two four. These th three points form half of a parabola because the graphs of quadratic equations are going to make parabolas. And there's going to be a reflection of this right half of the graph over on the left side. So we would have a point here and here as well. So just a quick sketch of the graph for y equals x squared would be something like this. Problems are kind of like u's or v's. Um, they have curves and I drew arrows on the ends because they continue forever in that direction. Now when we move to the right one, we went up one. So notice from the vertex we went right one, up one. That's a little pattern that we can use to help us graph more complicated equations. We can always make a table of values to graph these, but if we see certain patterns, it makes it easier. And we could extend that also. When we went over two from the vertex, we went up four. Over two, up four. And we got a point there. Now here's another parent graph. This is the graph for the equation y equals 2x squared. We'll start with x equals 0 again. When we substitute 0 in for x, well, 2 times 0 squared, that'll be 0. Let's try 1 again. Once we always do exponents first. 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. So notice when we go over 1, this time we went up 2. And when we substitute 2 for x, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. Make a quick sketch of the graph. It is 0, 0. 1, 2, and 2, 8. And we'll have reflections of those points over on the other side of the y-axis. Now the graph for y equals 2x squared is going to be steeper than the graph for y equals x squared. Oh, notice also here when we went over 2, we went up 8. That pattern might help us later. Now over here, instead of a 2 in front of the x squared, we have 1 half. Let's see what happens here. So when we substitute 0 for x, we get 0 again. When we substitute 1, 1 squared is 1, times 1 half equals 1 half. So when we go over 1, we go up a half. When we go over 2, well, 2 squared is 4, and 4 times a half is, well, half of 4 equals 2. So when we go over 2, we go up 2. So it's making a rough sketch of that parabola. We'll have the, zero, the vertex of the origin over 1, up a half, and over 2, up 2. And we'll have a reflection of that on the other side. Now compared to the graph of y equals x squared, this graph is flatter. Now we have similar parent graphs that are negative, and these are going to be the same, just upside down. This one will be steeper, and this one will be flatter. So there's just some rough sketches of these parent graphs. So 
Let's take a close look at this equation. This equation is written in vertex form. And it actually gives us some clues about what this graph looks like. So let's compare the graph to the equation. We locate the vertex. We notice that the vertex is at the point 2, negative 4. Well, we notice that the numbers up in the equation are closely related to these numbers. Now notice here this x minus 2 seems to be the opposite of this. Let's make a little note of where the vertex is, though. This one is, compared to the origin, this vertex is to the right, two units. And compared to the origin, where the parent graph vertex is located, this vertex is located down 4. Now the first move from the vertex is over 1, up 1 in both directions. And we notice that the coefficient in front of these parentheses is a 1. We don't see a number there, so we understand that there's actually a, a 1 there. So the steepness didn't change. Here's another equation written in vertex form. And here's its graph. Our vertex is left 1. And from the origin, it's down 3. Now, if we move from the, or from the vertex, right 1 unit, notice that we go up 2 on, in both to the right and to the left. And that's similar to the parent graph of y equals 2x squared. The first move was over 1, up 2. And we notice, so this graph is that 2 made it steeper compared to the last one. Here's another equation written in vertex form. Let's compare the graph of that equation to the equation itself. So we locate our vertex, and the vertex com is located one unit to the right of the origin and two units up from the origin. And this parabola is flatter than the parabola y equals x squared. So we notice this negative 1 half made it flatter. And in fact, when we go over 1 down, over and down, we go right 1 down a half. That was the first move when we go over and down. And when we, if we go over 2, we go down 2. Just like the parent graph for y equals negative one-half x squared. So we notice there's a relationship between the equation and the graph. This vertex form helps us locate the vertex and determine if the parabola should be upside down or not and how steep or how flat it is. One thing we have to be careful of is inside the parentheses, this clue is kind of backwards. Normally negative would be left. But in this case, it works out where it moves the vertex to the right. It's a little different from what we might expect. OK, let's summarize this. So here we have uh, just kind of a generic version of the vertex form equation for a quadratic equation. Now the a, that's going to help us determine the steepness of the graph how steep it is or how flat it is. And if A is positive, that parabola is going to be facing upward. And if A is negative, that parabola is going to be facing down. Now inside the parentheses, in the x minus some number, that's going to move it right or left. It moves it right when it's negative, and left when it's positive. Now the k is not backwards. This one, we're going to move the vertex up when k is positive, and down when k is negative. So the vertex is at the point h, k. All right, let's try graphing y equals x minus 1 squared plus 3. Let's locate the vertex first. Inside the parentheses, that's going to move this 
right one. And the coefficient here after the parentheses, that will move it up three, the vertex. So from the origin, there's our origin at zero, zero. I'm going to go right one, up three. Now that's where my vertex is. We'll make a quick table of values here. I'm going to start with the x value of my vertex. Now I already know that the y value is three. I'm going to move over one. So that'll be an x value of two. And let's just uh, use the equation here. Two minus one squared plus three. Well, two minus one, that's equal to one. So we have one squared plus three. One squared is one. So we have one plus three equals four. So when x is two, y is four. Now notice from the vertex, we went over one, up one, just like the parent graph, which is y equals x squared. So we'll go over one, up one in the other direction. Now if we move over two units from the origin, remember on the parent graph, that moved us up four. Let's see what happens here. So I'm going to substitute three into this equation. So three minus one squared plus three. That's just this equation over here. So simplifying, three minus one is two. Two squared equals four. And four plus three is seven. And sure enough, when we went over two, we went up four, just like in the parent graph. So I have the point three, seven. And once again, from the vertex, that's over two and up four, and in the other direction as well. Now we have a pretty accurate sketch of our graph. In our second example here, we notice that A is negative two. So that's going to make it upside down and steeper. And the vertex will be left two and down four. All right, let's locate that vertex. So instead of a zero, zero, it's to the left two and down four. So there's our vertex, and we know the parabola is going to be upside down and steeper. So it'll be down here. And if you think back to our parent graph for this one, y equals negative two x squared, the first move on this one was over one, down two. So we're thinking the next two points will be right here and right here, just using that pattern. Let's double check it with a little table of values here. So I'll start with my vertex. Negative two, negative four. I'll go over one, so I'm gonna to go to negative one. And I'll substitute negative one into that equation. Negative one plus two squared minus four. Let's simplify that. Negative one plus two is one. One squared is one. And see that's negative two minus four is negative six. And sure enough, when we went, moved over one, we went down two. In the parent graph, when we moved over two units to the right, we went down eight. Let's see, if we increase our x's by one, that'll be an x of zero. So we're thinking this will be negative 12. Well, let's substitute zero for x and find out. So I'm substituting this x value into this equation to figure out the y value. And if it follows the pattern of its parent graph, this should be negative 12. So we have negative two times zero plus two squared minus four. Zero plus two is two, two squared is four. We'll multiply here, negative eight minus four equals negative 12, sure enough. When we went over two, we went down eight, just like we did in the parent graph. So we have an upside down parabola that's very steep.
Now the parent graph for this one will be y equals 1 half x squared. And if we remember on that one, if the vertex is at, or the vertex is at 0, 0, and we went over 1, we went up a half. And we went over 2, it was up 2. Let's see what happens here. First, let's locate the vertex. That'll be to the left 4 and down 1. Here's our vertex. Put that vertex point here first, negative 4, negative 1. Let's go one unit to the right, so that'll be negative 3, and figure out what that is. So 1 half times negative 3 plus 4 squared minus 1. So I'm substituting negative 3 into this equation. So I'll work this out. Negative 3 plus 4, that's 1. And 1 squared equals 1. So this will be 1 half times 1, which is a half, but then we still have the minus 1. And 1 half minus 1 equals negative 1 half. So we get the point negative 3, negative 1 half. All right there. So sure enough, when we went over 1, we went up a half. The next point in our table, let's move over another one. So that'll be negative 2. And let's try that out. Let's substitute negative 2 in for x in this equation up here. So negative 2 plus 4 squared minus 1. Well, negative 2 plus 4 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. And 1 half of 4 is 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So when x is negative 2, y is 1, which is here. And sure enough, just like we were expecting from the parent graph, from 1 over 2, up to. And we have points that are reflections on the other side. So we have a right side up parabola that is flatter than y equals x squared. One last one. Now the parent graph for this one will be y equals negative 3x squared. And we didn't talk about that one yet. But we know that it will be upside down and steep. And the, set, and the vertex will be right 2 and up 4. So right 2 and up 4. So there's our vertex. Let's make a little table here. We'll start with this point. 2, 4. That's the vertex that we got from the vertex form of the equation. Let's move over 1. Now, we didn't study this one, so we don't have a pattern to follow yet. So let's take a look here. So we have negative 3 times 1 minus 2 squared plus 4. All right, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And when we square negative 1, we get positive 1. And negative 3 times positive 1, that's just negative 3. So this is equal to negative 3 plus 4, which equals positive 1. So we have 1, 1. I'm doing the left side this time, aren't I? So notice in our first move, we went over 1. We went down 3. Three times steeper in that first move. Let's see what happens. Let's continue in the left direction here. When x is 0, so I have negative 3 times 0 minus 2 squared plus 4. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And negative 2 squared is positive 4. And positive 4 times negative 3, that's negative 12. So we have negative 12 plus 4, which equals negative 8. 0, negative 8. Well, that's 12... 12 units down from here. So when we went over 2, we went down 12. And we have reflections of those points on the other side. So we have a very steep upside down parabola. Hopefully these examples about graphing and vertex form have been helpful. This is Mr. Ela signing off.